Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to be learning the pirate racing game, Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. This two to six player game designed by Don Beyer and Glenn Drover and published by Forbidden Games. Our mateys, it's time to set sail, board your ship and gather your crew to plunder merchants and make it be the first to make it to the island to claim the treasure. Will you be the first to make it or will you be going down to Davy Jones' locker? Find out as we go to the table and learn how to play Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Each player chooses a color and takes the four pirate ships matching that color and places one of them on each of the three starting spaces, the towns Gran Grandina, Havana, and St. Augustine. Place the fourth into the bag. Decide which player will be the start player by drawing one pirate ship from the bag. So we would start with blue. Then place the ships in front of each player indicating their player color. Place all cargo crates in the bag. Randomly drop cubes and place them on each merchant ship space on the board equal to the number of red cargo squares shown under the merchant ship. And I wasn't quite sure if you guys would be able to see the red dots uh, no matter how much of a close-up I did. So I already did. I already went and used my genie magic to pre-set up the board to show you kind of how that looks like with the cargos on there. So there's like stuff with one, two, and it can go all the way up to four. Shuffle all 20 treasure tiles face down from the pile. Select three times the number of players plus one. So three times two is six. So I'll put one, two, three, four, five, and six plus one off to the side of the board. These tiles will be available to be purchased in towns during the game. Set the remaining unselected tiles out of play into the game box. They may be used later. Each player gets 10 start cards in their color and shuffles them before dealing themselves five cards. They then take the remaining five cards and place them face down in front of them to their left to form the draw deck. Player start cards are denoted by a ship's wheel symbol in the upper left. However, I do want to point out the player cards also have colors matching each uh, ship. So you can identify them using the colors as well. Shuffle the 30 merchant card deck and place it face down in the merchant space in the upper right corner of your board. So right here. Cards in the merchant deck are denoted by a gold doubloon symbol in the upper left corner and I'll show you what that looks like. This gold doubloon symbol in the upper left corner indicates that this card is a merchant card plus most merchant cards will have merchant in its name. Shuffle all 49 support cards in the port deck denoted by a port symbol in the upper left corner. There are two types of port cards. Basic that have no symbol in the upper right corner and advanced port cards that have a symbol in the upper right corner. There are two types of advanced port cards. Discard out of play, which can be uh, identified with the skull and crossbones, and play to the table, which could be identified by the purple playing cards. These cards are used in the advanced rule book, but I'll let you discover what those are for yourself. Place the shuffled port deck face down near the game board, and that'll be off camera. Then draw the top three cards and place them face up next to the deck. So all three cards are visible 
these cards are the offering and these will also be off. And that completes the setup. You're now ready to set sail. In each round, beginning with the first player, going clockwise around the table, players will take a turn. On their turn, they will play three cards from their hand and move their pirate ship accordingly. So, I have six, so I'll move a pirate ship one, two, three, four, five, six along this path. After they have completed their turn, they will discard the cards that they have used into a discard pile to their right. They will then redraw from their draw pile so that they have five cards in their hand. Whenever the draw pile has no remaining cards, they will shuffle their discard pile and place those cards to their left to form a new draw pile. Play then proceeds clockwise around the table to the next player and so on proceeding to play the game. When playing a card, the player will have a choice whether to use the movement portion at the lower right of the card or the secondary action to the left if available. So what that means is you have a choice. You can, for a card like this one, Sailing Master's Mate, you can move three or you can discard one card from your hand out of play. Note, cards that are drawn as a result of playing a card are also placed in their player's discard pile, just like your standard deck building rules. When players play cards for movement, they will move one of their own pirate ships one space for each movement point on the card played. A player's pirate ship may be moved forward or backward on the track according to the player's desire. Note, some cards specify that a ship is to be moved backwards. Ships that are on a spur, the parts of the track that leads to a merchant ship, so like here, this area, or here, may not ever be selected for backwards movement. Two ships may occupy the same space. When a card is used to move a pirate ship, the entire value must be used to move a single ship. The movement value may not be split between two or more ships. So ex for example, if I played this able-bodied seaman right here and I discard him, he has a movement of two. I cannot move this ship right here, one, and then move this ship back here, and then move this ship right up here, one as well. That's not fair. I can only move this ship right here, one, two. Pirate ships that visit port or plunder a merchant ship collect cargo crates that may not move any farther that turn. Pirate ships may move onto a merchant ship space and choose not to plunder that merchant in order to continue moving. So, if I made it to here, I can choose to plunder this merchant ship and collect this cargo, or I can choose not to, and say I played this three and it only took me two, I can move one out. I don't know why I would want to though. When a player ship lands on a merchant ship space with cargo crates on it, that player may plunder the merchant ship, taking the crates and placing them in front of them, like so. Crates may be used later to purchase treasure tiles. When a player plunders a merchant ship, they also draw a card from the top of the merchant deck. So I drew one and I got young merchant seaman. This will then go to my discard pile. Once a merchant ship has been plundered, no cargo crates or cards may be drawn from that space. The merchant is gone unless new cargo crates are placed there as a result of card play. Pirate ships that plunder a merchant ship may not move farther that turn. When a player's ship lands on a port for the first time, they may select one of three face-up port cards or the top face-down port card and place it in their discard pile. As soon as one of the three face-up cards are taken, it is replaced 
from the top of the deck so that there's always three face-up port cards available available in the offer. So I could take this card right here, place it in my discard pile, and then I will replace it with this card from the deck. Pirate ships may not visit the same port twice in a game. Here's a little hint. To avoid confusion, face the pirate ship toward the port as they are moving toward the port. And away from the port when they have already visited the port. Pirate ships that visit a port may not move farther that turn. When a player ship lands on a port for the first time, they may also trade their plundered cargo crates for treasure tiles. When doing this, the player play, pays the correct number of cargo pieces, these crates right here, on the, shown on the treasure tile. So, let's say I wanted this treasure right here. It costs sugar and chocolate. That's the what the technical term for these crates are called. So I have a sugar crate and a chocolate crate. I have then paid for the tile and it is now mine. Places the trade crates into the bag and places the plunder treasure tile in front of them. Players may purchase as many treasure tiles as they can afford in a single turn. When the last treasure tile is claimed, draw a new treasure tile from those not yet used equal to the number of players or all remaining tiles if that is not possible and place them face up near the board. These tiles are now to be purchased. This redraw is performed only once in the game. Once the second draw of treasure tiles has occurred, no more treasure tiles will be drawn. As soon as any player's pirate ship lands on the Trinidad space over here, capturing the Spanish treasure fleet, the game ends immediately. The player may claim one treasure tile for free from those available. So most likely you would want to claim something that has a high value like this six victory point treasure tile right here. Each player now totals the victory points shown on all of their treasure tiles and treasure cards. Each cargo crate remaining in front of the player is worth half of a victory point. Players also gain victory points for each of their pirate ships based on the number of players in the game and where their ships finished on each track as follows. For the purpose of scoring, pirate ships that are on spurs are considered to be on the space on the main track that led into that spur. Pirate ships on the same space both score the points for finishing in that place. And the next ship will score the points for that next place. For example, in a five player game, the red player finished first on the black track, which is the one down here at the bottom, and receives 16 victory points. The black and yellow players both finish second and receive 10 victory points the blue player finished third and receives six victory points. The green player finishes fourth and receives three victory points. If this sounds a little confusing to you and you need a reference, there is a reference right above where it says Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. You may use that to help you score better. If two or more players have the same amount of victory points, the winner is the player with the treasure tiles that are worth the most victory points. If they still tied, the winner is the type of player with the most cargo crates. And if there's still a tie, they share a victory or have a duel with pistols. I would share the victory. And that's all you need to know to play Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. If you have any questions about this game, please put them down in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as I possibly can. Please hit that thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the channel as a whole, click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified when we release new videos. We release new how to play and gameplay videos every Monday. Uh, if you really are enjoying the channel, uh, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Uh, click on the link in the description below. I'll leave that down there. 
Uh, I want to thank our current Patreon uh, supporters uh, for your donations. Your help means everything to this channel, so thank you. Um, be on the lookout for our upcoming gameplay video on Extraordinary Adventures, but until then, thanks for the views. Mm -hmm.